Peter Griffin vs. the Giant Chicken, Equestria Style, by Conglomerate. You expected more than one chapter. It was another simple day in Quahog. Birds were singing, flowers were blooming, and the B-plot was probably happening somewhere. But not here. No, right here was the A-plot. And this meant only one thing. Peter Griffin, the family guy himself, was driving down the freeway in his red 1975 Ford Limited station wagon, minding his own business, obviously listening to Surf and Bird on the radio. ba 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 bird Bird. Bird. The bird's the word. He sang to himself, tapping the steering wheel with each beat. All was well, until it wasn't. A blue 1966 convertible Ford Mustang suddenly cuts Peter off, nearly running him off the road. Hey, what the hell? Peter shouted. Somehow the radio scratched like a record and Surf and Bird stopped playing. Peter gasped. Nobody interrupts Surf and Bird. He yells out in anger, putting the pedal to the metal. Peter quickly pulled up to the side of the car that just cut him off. He rolled down the passenger side window. Hey, Peter shouted. The other car just kept on driving, the tinted windows concealing whoever was inside. Hey, he tried again. Still no response. So Peter honked his horn. This seemed to elicit a reaction out of the other car as the window began to wind down. Jesus Christ, Peter exclaimed in shock before squinting his eyes. Take the wheel. Some unseen force appeared to grip the steering wheel, and Peter quickly climbed over the center console. Now in the passenger seat, Peter was now almost face to face with his arch nemesis, the giant chicken. You bastard. Nobody interrupts my surf and bird and gets away with it, Peter said, and quickly threw a punch. The giant chicken, unable to really dodge the punch, took it straight to the face. His car swerved a bit and dropped behind a bit. It quickly sped back up, however, and was soon side by side with Peter once again. Peter tried to punch the chicken again, but this time he was ready for it. A simple flick of the steering wheel took the giant chicken out of range, causing a car behind them to swerve out of the way, crashing into another car. A chain reaction occurred, as more and more cars were forced to get out of the way of a large pileup now forming behind Peter and the chicken. The chicken scowled at Peter, then smiled as he rolled up his window. The chicken's car swerved back towards Peter as he realized what was about to happen. Quickly retracting himself through the window, Peter was just able to get out of the way as the chicken's car slammed into the side of Peter car. Having not buckled his seatbelt, Peter was thrown back over the center console and sideways into the driver's seat, anger levels quickly rising. Peter reoriented himself back in the driver's seat and took back control of the car. Speeding up once more, Peter rammed his car into the back of the chicken's car, almost making the chicken lose control. Not to be outdone, the chicken tried to brake check Peter. He was fast to react, however, and turned out of the way just in time to avoid the chicken's car. Now side by side once again, the duelists started taking turns simply trying to turn into each other, the entire time speeding up as well. The cars ahead soon noticed the danger and drove out of the way of it. Soon enough, a police cruiser began to chase after the two, then another and another until a whole squad of police vehicles was now in pursuit, including a helicopter. Both Peter and the chicken paid no mind to the pursuers and simply kept swerving into each other. After a few more collisions, both Peter's and the chicken's cars were now worse for wear. There was no apparent damage to the engines, however, so they still were traveling at top speed. Ahead on the road, however, a stinger trap was being set. Peter was the first to notice and soon turned his car towards the nearest exit. The chicken was close behind, however, and stayed side by side with Peter, also attempting to dodge the trap. Noticing an opportunity, Peter laughed and stopped turning into the exit, forcing the chicken's car on a collision course with the divider. Now panicking, the chicken attempted to force Peter out of the way, but he held fast and continued to deny the chicken an exit. Thinking fast, the chicken unbuckled and quickly vaulted over the center console. Forcing his door open, the chicken leaped out of his vehicle and landed hard on the side of Peter's car. A moment later, the chicken's car turned back onto the freeway and into the police trap. It impacted a parked police car and spectacularly blew up. Looking in the mirror, Peter could see the chicken hanging off the side of his car. To solve this, Peter began to edge closer and closer to the divider in an attempt to shear the chicken off. An ear-piercing screech was heard as Peter grinded the side of his car against the solid concrete. Turning back into the road, Peter looked through the window as the mirror was now gone, no chicken in sight. Peter smiled. Thump, thump. Peter's smile faded, and he looked out his window once more, this time looking up. He came face to face with the chicken, who was now holding onto the rails of the car's roof. The chicken threw a punch, which hit Peter right in the face. Ducking his head back in, Peter began swerving left and right to dislodge the chicken, which was now blindly punching the area around the window. Not being able to hold on with only one hand, the chicken pulled his fist out and gripped the rails tightly as Peter continued to swerve back and forth. 
The chicken held tight, and Peter was forced to slow down due to a change in the road's direction. Not expecting the sudden change in speed, the chicken flipped over the roof and landed on the front of the car, blocking the windshield. Of, Peter shouted, and began speeding up again. The chicken, now able to actually see Peter, tried to punch through the glass, but only succeeded in cracking it a bit. Thinking fast, Peter turned on the wipers and sprayed the chicken with wiper fluid. This also had little effect. Grabbing a wiper, the chicken ripped it off of the car and tried to spear it through the glass at Peter. It was sprayed in the eyes, however, and while momentarily blinded, he missed his target completely, only managing to puncture the windshield. Wiping his eyes, the chicken reached for the wiper and smashed out the rest of the windshield. Peter began to swerve again in panic. Not being able to see where you're going at high speeds really isn't a good idea, as Peter's car drove right off the road, causing both of them to stop and see what was coming up. They were now driving through what appeared to be the courtyard of a high school, with the building fast approaching. Both screamed as the chicken grabbed on tight to the other wiper while Peter tried to regain control of the car. The pair just barely missed the statue in the center. Continuing forward, the car made it all the way up the steps and crashed through the large double doors at the entrance. Several students dived out of the way. The car continued to drive through the center hallway, which was just barely wide enough for it. There weren't a lot of students in the hallway, but those who were saw the incoming car and quickly ducked into nearby classrooms for safety. At the end of the hallway was a T-section and Peter slammed on the brakes, which did little as they were apparently broken. Bracing for impact, Peter shielded his face as the car smashed into the wall, utterly destroying a water fountain and causing several lockers to fall over. The chicken was ejected from the front and flew through the new hole in the wall into some classroom. Peter was fast to recover and kicked out the door to his car. He wiped a bit of blood from his nose and looked through the hole in the wall. The chicken did not come back through. Breathing a sigh of relief, Peter turned and began walking back towards the front entrance of the school, only to be tackled from behind by the chicken, who was covered in dust. Kicking him off, Peter jumped to his feet and picked up a stray backpack while the chicken reached over and grabbed a loose locker door. Opening up the backpack, Peter began to throw things at the chicken while backpedaling down the hallway. These things included some pens, pencils, coins, pebbles, and a broomstick handle. The chicken attempted to shield himself with the locker door but only partially succeeded as multiple pens and pencils were now stuck to him. With the backpack now empty, Peter began to use it as a makeshift flail, slamming it into the chicken over and over again. The chicken retaliated by smashing Peter with the door. This continued until the backpack was torn and the door was dented out of shape. Now out of weapons, they both began trading punches while continuing down the hallway. After a particularly nasty haymaker, Peter was knocked backwards a bit. Seeing the chicken approaching, Peter got up and slammed a locker door open in his face. It left a nice imprint. The chicken, in turn, also slammed a locker door in Peter's face, which also left an accurate imprint. Peter spit out a tooth and uppercut the chicken. Peter then grabbed the chicken's waddle and threw him over his shoulder. Now Peter was on the advance, forcing the chicken to back up down the hallway. By now they had made it back to the front entrance, trading punches the entire time. Peter tackled the chicken out of the ruined doors, and the two tumbled down the steps leading up to the building. At the very bottom, the chicken managed to get the upper hand and kicked Peter off towards the statue and over a bench. Peter picked himself up from behind the bench and got ready for the chicken's next attack. Running up to the bench, both Peter and the chicken played an awkward game of running around the bench trying to get each other. Every time one of them turned around, the other would as well. This lasted for several seconds longer than it should have. Getting fed up with the situation, the chicken climbed over the bench and tackled Peter, forcing him onto the ground and putting him in a chokehold. Not giving up easily, Peter repeatedly elbowed the chicken in the side, forcing him to ease up and let Peter go. Getting up quickly, Peter and the chicken grabbed each other's shoulders and began a pushing contest, trying to force each other into a worse position. Peter was gaining ground step by step before the chicken pecked him in the face, making him lose his footing and take few steps back. Having lost the advantage, Peter was now being forced back towards the bench, thinking quickly. Peter punched the chicken in the gut a few times and redoubled his efforts, managing to make it closer to the statue. In a last-ditch effort to win the contest, the chicken pecked Peter a few more times. This time Peter was ready for it and bobbed his head out of the way. By dodging the attack, it gave Peter the perfect opportunity to win the fight. He gripped the chicken's shoulders even harder, twisted his whole body, and threw the chicken at the base of the statue, hoping that the impact would knock him out. 
the statue base was not as solid as one would think, and the chicken passed through it as it warbled and rippled. Huh, Peter wondered, and walked up to closely inspect the base. He touched it with his finger, and the entire surface rippled like water. He wasn't able to do much else, however, as something pushed him from behind, throwing him into the portal as well. Pinky, why did you do that? Sunset Shimmer yelled as she peeked out from behind a bush. It seemed like the right thing to do, Pinky casually explained. Why would that ever be the right thing to do? Sunset Shimmer asked. I dunno. Pinky smirked back. Sunset Shimmer face palmed. Blowy ay ay Peter screamed as he was fell sideways through the portal. It was strange. He could tell he was falling, but not downwards. Then the shifting started. Peter could feel his whole body start to shift and change. It wasn't painful. Well, except for the multitude of cuts and bruises he sustained during the fight moving around. Other than that, it was a really weird sensation. Peter continued to fall sideways. Holy crap, this goes on forever, he said to himself. Almost as soon as he said that, he was ejected out of a mirror on the other side, managing to land on something soft. Peter tried to stand up, but soon fell over, prompting a quick examination of his body. Looking down, Peter saw feathers. Oh no, he said. Talons, please no, he continued. A beak. Dear God, please let this not be real, he shouted. He was a giant chicken. Nulu, he screamed into the air. Peter frantically looked around his eyes darting around the room, which appeared to be made out of crystal. His gaze ended at the mirror, where he saw his own reflection, but there was more to it. He wasn't just a giant chicken, no, there was more to his body. He also had what appeared to be the back half of a lion sticking out his back end. Hey, I'm a griffin, Peter Griffin the Griffin. Ha 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 sweet, he said. It was at this moment that whatever he had landed on before decided it didn't want to be sat on anymore. Peter was shoved off as the form got up, there stood a yellow pegasus with a red mane and beard that looked a lot like a chicken's comb and waddle. There was also what appeared to be an egg drawn onto its butt. Huh, look at you. You look like a pansy. Peter insulted. The giant chicken, now pony, scowled at Peter. He then turned around and bucked Peter with all his might. The impact sent Peter flying across the room and most likely cracked a rib or two. He slammed against a bookshelf and was soon buried under a pile of books, erupting out of the pile. Peter gave a very bird-like screech, then began picking up books and throwing them at the chicken, who had a hard time dodging them due to his new body shape. Once Peter ran out of ammunition, he leaped out of the pile and tried to dash towards the chicken, but only managed to awkwardly walk across the room, also getting used to the new body. Peter learned fast, however, and picked up enough speed to make it to the chicken and unleash a devastating claw attack with his new talons. Bugic. The chicken screeched, flinching away and holding up a hoof to the large gash on the side of its neck. It oozed a lot of blood. Quickly regaining his composure, the chicken kicked off into the air and drop kicked Peter, knocking him through the doors of the room, which promptly shattered. The chicken advanced upon Peter as he lay in the crystal shards. His hooves proved to be very effective blunt force weapons as the chicken repeatedly kicked Peter as he lay on the ground. Now on the defense, Peter held up his talons to block the incoming strikes, managing to lessen the impact of a few. After a couple moments of this, Peter maneuvered around and swept the legs of the chicken, forcing him to fall in the crystal shards as well, several stabbing themselves into the chicken. Peter quickly got up and found a particularly club-like shard of crystal. He gripped it in one of his claws. The chicken also got up and found a large enough shard, but was unable to actually pick it up with his hooves, so he simply held it in his mouth. Peter was the first to strike, slamming the shard down at the chicken, who quickly dashed to then swung his entire head at Peter. There wasn't much force behind the impact, but he definitely felt it in his side. Peter, in turn, faced the chicken and drove his face forward, pecking the chicken with his beak. How do you like it, huh? He shouted in anger. Peter raised his shard once more and swung it sideways. The chicken tried to jump back but was clipped by the edge of the shard. The impact forced his leg out from underneath him and caused the chicken to stumble a bit to regain balance. What is going on in here? A new voice yelled out. Both combatants only spared a second of attention at the voice before ignoring it to continue charging at each other. They were stopped, however, as both were enveloped in a teal glow and slowly lifted off the floor, still trying to run. Now they were forced to give more attention to whoever interrupted their fight. Who are you? How did you get here? Starlight Glimmer asked, moving her gaze back and forth between the two. It was then that she noticed the broken doors and crystal shards scattering the hallway. You came from the mirror, still ready to fight. Peter noticed that he was slowly drifting towards the chicken, taking the opportunity. He swung the club once more and bashed the chicken over his head, the impact releasing him from the force holding them. Dropping to the floor, the chicken was quick to act and threw his shard as hard as he could. It spun in the air and hit Peter right in the gut, making him double over in pain. Hey you two, stop that, Starlight shouted. 
Then she blasted the shard Peter was holding. It probably wasn't the best idea to do that, because a large chunk of crystal arced through the air and smacked Starlight right in the face, breaking her concentration. Peter then dropped to the floor and promptly tackled the chicken, clawing and throwing punches the entire time. The chicken retaliated by stomping and punching as well, the two managing to roll down the hallway a bit. Hey, what's going on? Spike asked, peeking his head from around a doorway just in time to see the two fighters coming right his way. Spike dived out of the way, but wasn't fast enough as Peter grabbed him by the tail and pulled him in. Now armed with a spike, Peter slammed him over and over again against the chicken. After a few swings, the chicken caught Spike and wrestled him out of Peter's grip. Now being held by the chicken, Spike was thoroughly dazed and confused. That was until the chicken bit down on Spike's tail, causing him to release a bout of flame at Peter. Peter ducked at the last second, and only the tips of the feathers on his head got burned. Peter reached forward and tried to grab Spike once more, creating some sort of tug-of-war game with Spike as the rope. By now Starlight had regained her composure and looked towards the duelist with anger. That's it. You guys are going to stop this right now. She screamed, enveloping all three in magic. As they started to get pulled apart, both Peter and the chicken gripped onto Spike hard, Peter on his left arm and the chicken on his right leg. Even Starlight grabbed onto Spike with her magic pulling hard on his tail. Tension was building. Everyone refused to let go, and Starlight continued to pull harder with her magic, completely unaware at the state Spike was in. Spike tried his hardest to hold together, but it eventually became too much to bear. He screamed loudly, which engulfed the immediate area in a blaze green dragon fire, completely covering both Peter and the chicken. When the smoke cleared, all that was left was Spike being dangled by his tail by Starlight's magic, which she then promptly dropped him on the floor. Oh, uh, Spike groaned and curled up into a ball on the floor. Whoops, sorry about that spike. I'll go get Twilight. Starlight excused herself, then quickly ran out the door. Peter was once again falling sideways, but this time, the chicken was with him in the vortex. It was really hard to maneuver in the vortex. Both the chicken and Peter were orbiting around a center point while also rotating in opposite directions. With nothing to base any movements off of it was really disorientating. By flailing around awkwardly for a bit, Peter eventually managed to get close enough to try and slash at the chicken again, only for the chicken to twist out of the way. Reaching forward again, Peter grabbed the chicken's hooves and yanked, causing the two of them to start spinning around. It seemed the vortex only increased the speed at which they spun, to the point where if they let go they might actually be ejected out of it. Now holding on for safety rather than violence, the chicken and Peter continued to spin rapidly down the vortex transporting them who knows where. It was just another day in day court for Celestia, more of her precious little ponies with their probably trivial problems. Every day they seemed to come to her for help with the easiest of things. No matter, she chose to rule these ponies so rule them she shall. It seemed nothing of interest would happen today. Just then, a wisp of green tinted smoke blew in from the entrance of the room and began making its way towards Celestia. Maybe something interesting would happen today. It wasn't often that Twilight sent her anything these days. You'll have to excuse me, my little pony. I appear to have received something of importance. She cut off the pony droning on about whatever they were droning on about. The pony fell silent and simply bowed in understanding, then stood off to the side. The wisp of smoke made it to Celestia and began to form the vortex to drop out whatever item was inside. Something was off, however. The vortex continued to swell well past the size of a letter, then larger to the largest package Twilight had ever sent. By the time it nearly equaled her in size, Celestia began to worry just what Twilight had sent her. Taking a step back as to not get hit, Celestia watched as the vortex grew in size until it looked unstable and off balance. The pony that had just moved to the side had now backed off a sizable distance as well. Then, a noise could be heard, just barely above a whisper. It was coming from the vortex, and it was getting louder. It sounded a bit like screaming but it was distorted. The volume continued to increase, and when it finally reached the point where it sounded like whatever was making the noise was blasting it right into her ear, the vortex exploded into a vibrant shower of green sparkles. Thump! The sparkles dissipated quickly, and Celestia was left very confused at what lay before her. Both a griffin and a pony lay before her, arms locked so tightly that the griffin's talons drew blood. It was then that Celestia noticed that both of them were very injured. Each was covered in bruises, cuts, and lacerations. The griffin also looked to have a black eye forming while the pony had blood smeared all over it. Both of them opened their eyes at the same time, and they each shakily got up. They both stumbled a bit, obviously very dizzy from the trip. The pony twirled around in circles and the griffin stumbled back and forth. 
The griffin seemed to recover first. It shook its head and stood up straighter. Um, um Celestia broke her regality. She didn't get to finish, however, as the griffin locked eyes with the pony and just straight up socked him in the jaw. The hit sent the pony reeling and he fell to the ground. This elicited a gasp from the court and Celestia herself as they watched the scene unfold. Guards, Celestia nearly shouted. How dare this griffin commit an act of violence in her court? A lot of guards funneled into the room, and as they surrounded and restrained the griffin, the pony shook off its daze and got back up. With a huge scowl on its face, it spat out a tooth, which landed near a noble whom immediately fainted. The pony took a step, then another and another until it was standing above the griffin. The crowd was silent as the pony reared up and then slammed both of its hooves down upon the griffin. Shocked gasps erupted from the crowd as the guards also restrained the pony. Take them away, Celestia commanded. The pair was quickly dragged off and Celestia turned to look at the horrified crowd. Sorry about that my little ponies. I have no idea what Princess Twilight was thinking sending me those two but they will be swiftly dealt with. Now, let us continue the court, Celestia said. Both Peter and the chicken were being dragged side by side down the long corridor. They each had two guards dragging them and there were three more accompanying them. It was only when one of the guards brought out some shackles that Peter started to plan. It was only when the guard clamped the first cuff around Peter's talon he sprung into action, quickly punching the guard holding him and yanking the chains away from the other one. The next moment, he twisted around the other guard holding him and wrapped the chain around his neck, forcing him into a chokehold. The three guards escorting them leapt into action, drawing spears and approaching Peter. Glancing around, Peter determined the best course of action was to throw the guard he was holding towards one of the advancing ones then tackle another. The third was quick to act and jabbed the spear towards Peter, which just grazed him. Grabbing a drop spear, Peter swung it around and smacked it against the third guard's helmet, knocking him out. The chicken had realized what was going on by now and had also wrenched himself out of the guard's grip and began fighting them. Several more guards rounded the corner to try and stop the two, but they were ready for it. Peter yanked off a downed guard's helmet and chucked it at an advancing one, knocking him to the floor. The chicken grabbed two guards' heads and slammed them together, knocking them both out. The last remaining guard took a step back but wasn't quick enough as Peter spun around and kicked him with both hind legs, shoving him into a marble pedestal. A large vase teetered up top then fell down onto the guard, taking him out of commission. Roadhouse, Peter said coolly, standing together. It was then that both the chicken and Peter realized something, and they quickly turned to attack each other. The chicken picked up a spear in the crook of his hoof and attempted to thrust it at Peter, who grabbed another helmet and deflected the attack. The chicken then charged at Peter, knocking him off balance and slamming him against the wall. The chicken that put both hooves on Peter's face and began dragging him across the wall. Peter quickly put a stop to that by grabbing both hooves and throwing the chicken over his shoulder and onto a staircase leading upwards. Advancing quickly, Peter leapt on top of the chicken and began slamming his head into the stone steps, cracking a few. The chicken kicked at Peter with both hind legs and threw him further up the stairs. They began to trade punches once again as they slowly climbed the stairs. Reaching the top, Peter grabbed the chicken once more and spun him around, eventually throwing him through a pair of large double doors, knocking them both off their hinges. Running into the room as well, Peter frantically looked around for the chicken in what appeared to be a night-themed bedroom. Coming from behind, the chicken shoved Peter forward into a large curtain hanging next to a large balcony. The curtain unhooked from the wall and fell all over Peter, blinding him. Seeing an opportunity, the chicken carefully walked around Peter as he punched around blindly. Getting up right behind him, the chicken turned and bucked Peter right in the back, sending him crashing through a set of glass doors. Now out on the balcony, Peter got up and pulled the curtain off, just in time to turn around and dodge a charge from the chicken, who slammed into the metal railing, bending it out of shape slightly. Before Peter had a chance to counterattack, the chicken bit down hard on the railing and yanked with all his might, managing to pull a few posts out of the marble floor. Swinging it around, the chicken just barely missed Peter with the length of railing he had just pulled out. Peter in turn crouched down and pounced at the chicken, shoulder checking him off the edge of the balcony. The chicken was still holding onto the railing however, and the length he had pulled out came from behind and clipped Peter in the back, also knocking him off the edge. Thinking fast, Peter reached out and grabbed the chicken's hind legs, yanking them both down further. Several more posts were ripped out of the marble floor, leaving only a few left. The chicken kicked a Peter a bit, who tried to climb up further, only to fall back down, ripping out another post. Just as Peter was about to try again, another post was ripped out by their weight, then another, then the final post gave out, dropping both of them off the balcony and down the cliff. <laughs> Peter screamed, Buggick. The chicken screeched, 
Wang He, Luna mumbled, having woken up and removed her sleep mask. She looked around her room confused. The chicken, having lived with wings his whole life, certainly knew how to use them and quickly learned how to slow his fall and start hovering. Peter, meanwhile, was clawing at the air trying to slow his fall any way possible. Then he remembered something. Oh yeah, I got wings now, he said to himself, trying as hard as he could. Peter tried to open up his wings, but nothing happened. Come on, he muttered. By now Peter had fell past the castle and was now in line with the cliff face. He tried harder, flexing all the surrounding muscles. Nothing. Hello, he said, panicking. As a last-ditch effort, he grabbed his own wings with his talons and forced them outward. This seemed to work a bit, but more importantly it told Peter where those muscles were. So he extended his wings all the way out. Peter immediately stopped falling, and he began gliding slowly away from the cliff face towards some clouds. Oh yeah, that was awesome. He shouted excitedly. That excitement didn't last, however, as the chicken dove down right on top of Peter and slammed into his back, causing him to lose some altitude. Still being new to flying, Peter tried really hard to fly back up by flapping his wings. He didn't make it very far. Realizing he couldn't fight the chicken like this, Peter instead started gliding over to some clouds to try and lose the chicken in. The chicken kept up his assault, however, and continued to dive bomb Peter as he glided over to the clouds. Eventually, they were just about to pass through the cloud, and Peter expected to simply glide right through it, only to smack right into it as it was apparently solid. What? He asked as he stood up on the cloud. The chicken dive bombed Peter again but this time he was ready for it and quickly dodged to the side. The chicken also landed in the cloud and appeared to be stuck in it. Peter quickly leaped over and pinned the chicken down on the cud, flapping his wings to give him extra height. With the chicken now pinned against the cloud, Peter repeatedly punched the chicken in the face while holding his neck against the cloud. The chicken's face began to turn red, then purple as Peter constricted his airways. As a last-ditch effort to escape Peter's grasp, the chicken scooped up a bit of cloud on his hoof and smashed it into Peter's face, only for it to poof harmlessly. Peter left. Trying again, the chicken scooped up some more cloud, but this time compacted it a bit until it looked like a dark storm cloud. Slamming it into Peter's face actually did do something, as a small bolt of lightning traveled through the cloud and into Peter, shocking him into letting go. Peter recovered and scooped up some cloud as the chicken gasped for breath. Peter then chucked the small storm cloud at the chicken, shocking it as well. The two continued to have a lethal cloud ball fight, scooping up cloud, compacting it, then throwing it at each other. By the end of it, both Peter and the chicken were scorched and their hair, feathers stood on end. Quickly smoothing down his feathers, Peter pounced at the chicken again, only to realize one thing. There wasn't much cloud left. As Peter collided with the chicken, their combined weight was enough to dissipate the remaining cloud that the chicken was standing on causing both to fall down to the forest below. The chicken was unable to fly up as Peter held his grip on him. Plummeting down to the forest, the two managed to fall into a small stream, cushioning most of their fall. It was then Peter realized one thing. He didn't know how to swim as a griffin. Bobbing up and down in the stream, Peter gasped for air and tried to swim to the shore as best he could. He could tell the chicken was having even more trouble than he was, but he didn't care about that right now. Slowly but surely, Peter made his way towards the bank and eventually managed to climb out of the stream altogether. Looking back, Peter could see the chicken struggling to swim against the current and was eventually swept further downstream, out of view. Letting out a sigh of relief, Peter sat down to catch his breath. He was soaking wet, injured in multiple places, and in a completely different world. Just how would he get back now? Then, bursting out from the tree line, the chicken ran screaming into the clearing with a large stick in his mouth. Before Peter could even react, the chicken swung the stick and smacked Peter in the back of the head, stunning him. Now on the floor, the chicken took the chance to kick some dirt into Peter's eyes, blinding him. The chicken then jumped up on top of Peter and pressed his whole leg against his throat, trying to choke him out. Peter struggled, but not being able to see didn't help at all. He clawed at the chicken's leg, but the chicken kept holding him, ignoring the pain. Just when Peter was about to give up, the bush behind them rustled. Buggick, Peter heard. Buggick, the chicken screeched. Buck Buck, came from the bushes. Buggo the chicken was cut off. Peter stopped struggling. The chicken's leg now stiff and cold against his throat. He still couldn't see, but whatever was in the bushes had clearly left. Shoving the chicken off, Peter regained his bearings. Rubbing his eyes, he was able to see what became of the chicken, only to see a very lifelike statue sitting in the dirt. Looking around, Peter couldn't see anything else in the clearing. Now thoroughly tired, Peter turned and walked into Sunset Shimmer. Whoops, I meant walked off into the sunset. The clearing was now empty, all except for the chicken statue. Crack.
like and subscribe.